Okay. Uh, it is different. completely different. Okay, Explain so this again. Okay, you got country fried steak, chicken fried steak, chicken fried chicken, fried chicken, and then you got fried chicken. Fried chicken is just fried chicken, but then you got fried chicken steak and country fried steak, and then you got country fried chicken, which is not the same as well, country. Jump the gun no. with over and done, no. girl. Cause we were crushing it right up to last night. Instead of a finale, let's lean into a rally. Be better than ever. Cause I I think we're ready for a comeback, baby. Wanna see it turn around? Hey everyone, I'm Callie on SV So Much More. And I'm Hannah on Sailing Vessel Grace. And this is... We are Ray and Sonia on Sailing Vessel Rum Rations. And, and they have a story to tell. <laughs> okay. And we'll let them tell you, but they also need your help and your prayers. Take it away, Raymond and Where do we start? The beginning? The beginning. The beginning is always a good place beginning's to a good start. Place. Okay. Okay. So we bought our first sailboat in November uh, of '23. Uh, we'd never been on. We never had our own sailboat before. We'd always had power boats, but we uh, went on a sailing crew, uh, a sunset sail cruise, and we got hooked to do. And it took us about a year to get ready to do that. We went down to Florida. We had sold our house in Tennessee and went down to Florida and bought a boat. Left the states in November. Uh, went down and had new rigging put on it, a lot of you know, different things taken care of. What kind of boat is that? This is a 43 a Gulf Star. So we left the States in January, headed to the Bahamas. On our way, let's see, I'm trying to, where do we start? <laughs> so we'd, we'd made it through the Exumas for the most part. So we're headed into Georgetown. Well, we were in Black Cay uh, in the Exumas and we lost our engine. Coming out of Black Cay. Coming out of Black Cay. Yes. yes. So, here we are. <laughs> We've never why sailed a boat before. Why don't you but talk about how, what the, some of the inlets, like the inlet to Black Cay. Like the waves because if and you everything. haven't okay. been and why there we before, went in there. Okay, no, okay. So, people okay. can't. We looked on Navionics and we found Black Cay. It was a, what is a 150 foot wide entrance. entrance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With um, rocks on both sides. Yeah, big rocks on both sides. So, but we motored in. in. Yeah, we motored yeah. in. Motored in. Stayed anchored. A, anchored. Stayed a few few days actually, and uh, we were ready to go and leave for Georgetown, which is 18 miles away. And uh, but you have to go out the same. Right. So we were motor sailing out, up, motor sailing out of this inlet, and the waves were four to five, so we were coming in straight up and down, you know, and uh, the engine died. So we were almost all the way in the inlet, and I was able to swing it back around and get back into the anchorage. And I thought, well, maybe I'm low on gas here, so maybe that's what happened. We got some air in the engine. So I cranked it back up. She cranked right back up. Went back out the inlet. Same situation. Died at the very same spot. Very same spot. Come back in. So it took us about two days to get the right wind and the right nerve to sail through that out of inlet, this inlet out. with no engine because we'd never done that before. So we managed to sail out. Um, it probably took us another seven hours to get into Georgetown, sailing into Georgetown. And uh, we stopped just short of the main anchorages and because uh, it was getting dark. We sailed into Georgetown and uh, it's getting dark, so we, we stopped there right around Lily Kay. And uh, the next day we got on the cruiser's net and there were 20 dinghies out to help us get in. Steve and Hannah from Grace were one of them. Um, and there, there was there's just too many others to mention. Um, but that, the community, just like this community, is, is just a great, 
great community. We've never experienced anything like what we've experienced so far in the sailing world. So we <clears throat> we had the engine looked at uh, several times by several different people who formed several different opinions. It's going to be a complete rebuild. The problem with that was that during this time, we, we have an Amazon business, had an Amazon business for about nine years in the States. And our business partner died. The business was more of a handshake thing that he and I had had for years. And immediately uh, when that happened, we didn't get the notification fast enough. We couldn't shut the business, put it on vacation. Amazon just shut us right down from missing too many deliveries, from missing too many shipments. Let me back up a little bit. This was our sailing kitty. We had bought our boat from the, the sale of the house and we had put rigging on it and we'd done this, that, and the other. And so not only did you okay. lose the income, so did, but then not then only did we lose the, the money. income and then we have you know basically the money invested. Uh, the money that was there, not to mention the money that we were supposed to continue to get every two weeks that would have taken us for years. We had to make a decision when we were in Georgetown. Do we sail back to the U.S. or do we sail to the DR? Because we could no longer afford to stay in the Bahamas. Uh, it was entirely it too expensive. To, it just took every penny that, that we had left. So we felt like the safest route for us was to continue on to the Dominican Republic where we had friends here. We could then possibly form some new plan. So we've been selling multiple items off of our boat to stay afloat, sometimes to eat. Um, in addition, so, uh, Sonia has some medical issues that have to be addressed and prescriptions that have to be filled. Thank, thank, thankfully, medicine here and medical care here is at least very affordable. So we found in the medical care in the Dominican Republic is on, t is on two levels. Uh, there's a public system and there's a private system. And the public system will only go so far. You have to have insurance if you need something, some serious testing done, something that needs to be followed by a particular type of doctor. You've got to have some insurance. If you, we don't have a health insurance that we brought from the states. There is a plan that's available here. It's $40 a month. Right now we cannot afford that. Which ultimately we found that they can fix this issue yeah. if we had the insurance to right. have the, the surgery right. or the money to do it. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes. There is a doctor here that we've we've talked to. Dr. Carlos is very familiar with her her condition, and it, it can be corrected. But it's going to be a three month minimum issue. Uh, you have to be on the insurance that long to to then step up and start getting the real testing and headed towards surgery. And you've had this medical issue for some time, yes? Since I was 12. Undiagnosed. Uh, yeah, it was undiagnosed for the longest time. We went through probably 30 years worth of doctors that just never could pinpoint it. Um, but then I finally was diagnosed a couple of years ago, but they still didn't give me much in the way of knowledge of what it is or what it, why it's so painful or what it, why it causes such severe distension. And it wasn't until we got here that Dr. Carlos actually educated us on why it's so severe and why there's no other recourse than the surgery. the surgery that's for fixing it. But can't live. I cannot live because it's been so many. How do, he called it something. Uh, yeah, I don't remember the word he used. He said it turned into this, and that it, there's, it's it is debilitating, literally. Um, yeah, it, it is, and, and there and there are some things that there there is the means to correct it. So yes. what do we got? You got the loss of engine, your business stolen out from you, and all your kitty savings, life savings stolen away from you. You have your medical condition, and right now we're here in the DR and. You're sharing our, your story and we're hoping to put it out on our various platforms and hoping that we're going to do a PayPal account that... Um, because we can't even afford to get water. And it not only becomes an issue, you know, the obvious issues of, of you know, just maintaining your daily sustenance, but then 
your boat is is deteriorating and depreciating because you can't afford to do the things that you should be doing. Yeah. You, you can't the, get the, the bottom done. You can't keep the maintenance up because you, you need to do this, that, and the other. I would um, like to speak about that. You were talking about sailing out of the inlet. And we had, on Grace, we have some sailing experience. We've sailed around a little bit. And I don't think we've ever sailed out of an inlet, at least in, not in this sailing trip years ago when we sailed we probably did but I, we always just go back to the engine at that point in time yeah. that's a big statement and to sail entirely against the, wind, against the waves yeah through those narrow inlets Very. without hitting the rocks yeah this is not an easy thing to do and we waited two days to get to get the right yeah. wind and, and and then we caught it on a beam range that Bridge. that Bridge. inlet that they're talking about yeah that inlet was the one that we tried to go in and turned away from so I guess what I'm saying is they are excellent sailors. If you had the resources, are you capable of rebuilding your engine yes. and doing the, all of the other repairs? Yes. 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 Uh, we're capable. What uh, recourse, what actions can you take to get your money back? Because we have no contracts in place. Mm, it was just a handshake. That's what so, I'm trying to so say. So we've got really two things that we're looking at. One, we have an immediate need. We don't have food, we don't have water, we don't have a functional boat. We're stuck in the DR without even the ability to get a plane ticket home. Couldn't right. even pay the right. fees. Couldn't even pay the fees to get out of the country. Right. right. So we have an immediate need for food, water, uh, medicine, and the repair of an engine. And to buy enough time to be able to make a decision as to whether the boat needs to get sold and then get through the several months to get the boat sold or whether to find another source of income and start a new business. Panic. Yes. yes, but <laughs> that's where we just we've gotten to the point we don't have any other. Yeah, yeah, we don't. We, we just don't. We, we pulled into the DR with two hundred five dollars. I believe it was. Mm -hmm. We paid a hundred and ten dollars in entry fees, <laughs> and then we went and got something. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, that was the first I, time. We I might a add something. Days. Raymond and Sonia are not just freeloaders. These are people that had a functional business. They had a good fair sum of money. They bought a boat they thought was ready to go and it turned out that it wasn't ready to go. It needed more repairs than they thought. And then with a death and an embezzlement, they've lost everything. So if you're able to help, willing to help, uh, we'll have links for uh, the PayPal account and if you can see fit to help, that would be great. If you can share this with all your friends, that would also be great. And just, you know, any help. Prayers especially would be appreciated. And that's about it. That moment everything changed. It's like a neon you know, by the time Ray and Antonia finished telling us their story, it was coming up on four o'clock and I went into the galley and I just remember thinking, what do I have that I can feed everybody? Because, you know, you, ha you have a group of people over, you want to also share a meal. And Hannah must have been thinking the same thing in because she followed me shortly thereafter and the two of us put our heads together and she told me what she had in, in her galley and I was rooting through the fridge freezer here for what I have and um, pretty soon we had a fabulous meal of rice and beans, what we affectionately, affectionately called stone soup because it pretty much had everything in there that was edible. Stone soup. Yep. If luck were on my side and I hit all the green lights on my way back home when I This video is a collaboration between both our gracious hosts, Sailing Vessel, so much more, and Sailing with Grace. If you'd like to support either of us, and especially Rum Ration, please like the video, subscribe to both channels, comment below, any questions, comments. And share, and share, share and the video. In the description, we will have a link to a PayPal. Thanks for watching.
And they have a story. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this and see the record there yeah it's recording okay good and it's a great thing you said yeah yes that's an editing is a great thing you said you're west i'm steve <laughs> <laughs> okay it is completely different explain this again okay you got Chicken fried steak, chicken, 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 chicken fried chicken, and then you got fried chicken. Fried chicken is just fried chicken, but then you got fried chicken steak and country fried steak, and then you got country fried chicken, which is not the same as well, country fried steak. One of those chickens isn't even chicken, it's beef, but it's called... <laughs> Yeah, it's chicken fried steak. Okay. It's chicken fried steak. And there's chicken fried steak and there's chicken fried chicken. Explain so it. So does it have to come from Explain the, the difference? Okay.